What's up, y'all? We've got a tough shed, L-handle style lock, T-handle, L-handle, same thing, just uses a post that goes through and attaches. There's a cam plate that goes over this and attaches, and when you turn the handle, it flips a plate uh, behind the frame of the door. It was a super thick door, and the customer that I had gone out to many years ago had, had it forced open. Apparently, the person was able to just literally crank down with this big handle and, and force it open. Uh, what's interesting about this though, is uh, there's literally no, very, very little security. So, you know, while the sheds may be tough, the locks certainly aren't. You see a retaining ring right there. You could easily maybe take it apart to make a key for, but there's actually an even easier way to do this and, and we'll show you here. It's uh, in the locked position and uh, you, you, you know, even on, on some of these, you could actually, not this particular one, but on some locks like this, especially ski racks and such that use the same kind of weirdo little core, you could actually just reach in there and pull the core out. Now this doesn't work on it with it in the lock position, but that is absolutely no big deal because these are very easy to to unlock if you turn it 180 degrees right there you can see you can just unlock it and i'll show you that again so locked and unlocked and basically turn it 180 degrees it's unlocked now we got to make keys for it that code ts33 does not come up in code source but it's not a big deal because you can just take take a hook pick here and then reach all the way to the back of the cylinder and pull your core out just like that now all we have to do is find the key blank that fits it basically what this is doing is going to the back and since that retainer wafer you can see it's looks like five wafers but this last one actually is what holds the core in and if you take your pick to the back because these don't have an open back to them you can actually just lever it down somehow or another here obviously i did it oh i was going in too far with it there we go so well, just pull it straight out. Uh, so no big deal on that. Let's find a key blank for it. This is a, uh, the wafers only go up on one side, but it does use a double-sided key. So your common ones for that are going to be like the 1611, 1611R, which is just the reverse. Uh, we'll try this Trimark TM15 or 1623. It does not work. Uh, maybe Larson LD1 nope, goes right in and actually works. And, and we now that we have the key blank and we have the core out, we can just sight read where the cuts are. But if we look at our example lock right there, focus. Uh, I am pretty dang sure this key blank itself would work. It's poking up really on that third wafer right there, pokes up a little bit. Uh, and on those sides, it pokes, pokes up a little bit there, right there. Not, <laughs> I really do think that'll work, y'all. So with retaining wafers with closed bottoms one thing you do need to make certain of when you're making a key is if it's too long and you put the key in there the tip of the key may actually pull that wafer down when you push it in now it's not doing it to that one so i don't think we have to trim this guy you do want to check that though with any of these that you do like this when you put the key blank all the way in if it's too long and that closed bottom wafer right there it may actually act as a removal key but this one does not seem like it's doing that so we are just gonna cut the key and, and really with this one all we have to do is just kind of really we could just eyeball it but let's do something here 
Let's uh, make sure our pivot's in the right spot right there. Where does this? Okay, so that notch goes. This way, push that down, and that little peg goes into that. So, nope, we need to do it the way we took it out. So, we need to move that back. And there it is, a little dot on it. So, we know we remember that dot was on this side when we took it out. And then we can probably just reach in here. And get these wafers back down just like that gotta get it to snap into position okay there we go now yeah, i'm curious about something okay oh, key blank works it it's a little tight there's a little it's a little tight right there but nothing you couldn't really overcome Wow, super secure with the key blank. It's a little tight, so I am gonna cut. Remember those wafers were sticking up just a little bit, but since it is tight, it should be marking for us really well. Yeah, we can see, you can see that little mark right there. And then that little mark right there. go ahead and cut that obviously we don't need to go too deep with it so about there where was that other one right about here Ooh, perfect now let's cut the other side We'll just eyeball it across the key. A little bitty. Move it over just a bit right there. And right there. Pretty much unnecessary. But that's it to making a key for this guy. Obviously, if you had different wafers, you would just line it up and cut where they needed to be but yeah no big deal making a key for this fella y'all or opening it or taking the core out or literally anything i certainly hope the sheds are tougher than the locks because there's not a whole lot to that guy at all just you know something where these people make these locks and they put like literally no thought into the security of them even even a, a supreme novice could handle that little task. So when you had the key blanks, and if it was this particular one, you know, you need to cut the key. You can just, just make it work. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments about the quality of that, direct them towards Tough Shed, not me. But uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, we'll catch you next video.